an NRL gig. Possibly. Certainly, I don't think the issue about his indiscretions outside of the game will cause any problem for a league that has Blake Ferguson playing in it, that has um, Packer playing in in it, that has um, what? Tirona Uvavu or whatever you call him. Yeah, Uvavu. Iranu. <laughs> yeah. Is it Iranu or is it Uvavu? It was both. I think. What was <laughs> right? What was wrong? <laughs> Yeah, um, I do indeed. <laughs> wow. um, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And you know, more recently, um, other dog botherers have presented themselves in the league as well. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Mitchell Pierce has re- redeemed himself all of a sudden. Absolutely, and, isn't it wonderful? You know, yeah. So I don't think those things are going to be the no. problem for Zach Cardaker. I think that it's going to be um, the, the the maturity to focus on. The, the game when he has to focus yeah. on the game yeah. I think he's got those problems in him either side and he's got growing up in him and he's got the ability to do that wherever he is either side yeah. of the world but what is he 24 yeah. so, we were all yeah. you know it, it's nobody likes you when you're 23 isn't it? it's you know, we're all sort of a bit dickheadish at that point and he lives his life in the public eye not so. all of us Tom a bit we've all got a bit of dickhead yeah. in us at 23 we have We've all got a bit of a dickhead in us at 34. Well, 34, 34, yeah, exactly. So there you go. So you just learn to manage your inner dickhead, don't you? And if you can do that and, uh, and improve his performance more than anything else, I think he'll do fine. Yeah. Um, but he does need to improve how he's been playing. Yeah, but I think that's that's there to see. That's that bill, down to yeah. his being unhappy at Leeds, obviously. Possibly. Um, okay, so we're going to go to Dave Cantrell, he said. Eddie Jones' outburst is bound to be a topic of yeah. conversation next week, and as a token Union fan on the show, I suppose it's up to me to stir the shit up and stand up for him. Trouble is, I can't. What he said, rugby league is not a skillful game, it's a game where you've got to hurt people, is just plain silly. It is. And I, I think... would say this wasn't going to come up on the show until someone yeah. said something about it, because I don't have a... A, what's it like a, a complex about this no uh, I, I just assume it was a guy going down under looking to stir up some press I think so when too. he's in Queensland yeah. during Origin Week yeah I mean he, he needs to get some focus on his, his sport I would assume so he said something stupid he clearly yeah. has a lot he's of respect just, for rugby league he does and he's a respected coach and he's not stupid enough to say yeah. that and unless he's doing it for ulterior motives I don't think and the other side of this coin is how many league converts or you know league genetics do there do, is there that exist in that England rugby union team anyway? With guys like Ben Teo coming over and the fact that most of their flair players are either called Farrell or grew up on the same street as a Farrell, it's you know. Well, let's face it: two, the two players who were the key, probably creative yeah. outlets and goal and point scoring outlets were in rugby that league. team were rugby league. Were, Sons of Great yeah. Britain rugby league, exactly. In so so yeah, yeah, I don't think they would agree with you either. So no, he's just stirring the he's just yeah. stirring the pot in Brisbane. I wouldn't worry. Uh, Dom Hodgson, this that came off the back of um, a bit of conversation about Bernie Mac, I mm. think. But he said, if you could have a celebrity coach for your club, <laughs> <laughs> who would it be and why? Oh dear. So what did you come up with? I didn't. I didn't even think about it. I thought it was, this was for you. you I, left it, you I left this in your realm. You didn't come up with it. Can I? Can I have um, a fictitious celebrity coach? And can I have Brian Potter? Just, <laughs> just for first of all, because you used to call Mick Potter Brian Potter by accident a couple of times. But just for the team talks, they can't be any worse than what the lads have been having. You know, at some at certain points this season. So I go with Brian Potter. Well, if we're doing that, I, I suppose. I think I'd, I'd get someone like David Brent in charge of St. Helens, <laughs> not not maybe of Wigan, because I think he'd do a better job of motivating the team than, than the current Yeah, he is, he is one step away from Sean, get the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're at um, Paul Michael Craig now. Yes. He says, rather than a War of the Roses, how about a Home and Away series, Super League's best English players versus NRL-based Poms? The NRL side may need to... Uh, need a few English heritage players like Harrington to make up a 17. Did you know, you probably did know because you know a lot about rugby league, did you know that Trent Hodkinson uh, qualifies to play for England through his dad? I've heard that before, yeah. Yes, so uh, I was reading that in the paper today, so that's, uh, that's an interesting one. I don't think, before we go on to Trent Hodkinson, um, the logistics of a home and away series are an absolute nightmare. I was thinking about this and thinking, if we could get some sort of interest somehow in the Exiles comp. Yeah. competition again then they could do that over here whilst they're doing and, and during origin time you can have England against New Zealand which has been mentioned before yeah. and without having to fly too many people over yeah. um, you could probably do I mean come on in, in in four years time we could have 25 30 English players playing in the NRL yeah, so that's true I think we might have to dig a little bit deeper and get a few people out of 
the the reserve grades, yeah. um, depending on how things work out for people like Tyrone McCarthy and Joe Burgess and mm, stuff. Joe Burgess. Oh, you winced as you said that. I think for the time being, instead of playing a home and away series, we need to be doing something against our neighbours. Yeah, and also, I don't really want to be playing against our... Come on, did you not hear that? Instead of a home and away series, we need to be doing something against our neighbours. Okay. Fine. Are you going to work in like a Knott's Landing one? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of it, no, but I'm trying very furiously trying to figure a way to get prison in the cell block H in there. And whatever that fucking TV show was that Connie Hurrell's missus was on. There was one about coppers. There was a police TV show. Oh, right, okay. You know, Conwell Hurrell's. Yeah, I'm aware of it. That, that yeah. lovely, obliging young lady. Yeah. Yeah, she was, uh, she was in some kind of, I think something street or something. It's about policemen. Anyway, um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know about the logistics of that. But also, I'd, I'd, I also think... I know it works for the Aussies with Origin, but doing it in terms of the whole distance that they'd have to travel to make the fixtures work and stuff, I, I just don't know how that would yeah. work out for, yeah. for, the, for the welfare of our players. Yeah. If so it's, it's a tremendous amount of travel. Yeah. It? Absolutely. But we have asked for our, uh, we have asked the listeners for our Yorkshire and Lancashire teams. We didn't get any Lancashire ones in. We got three Yorkshire ones in. Okay. Um, then we'll give ours. So we'll, we'll, we'll run through the ones we've got first. Lee Whitnell, yeah. um, who's a Warrington fan, but he is from Yorkshire originally, isn't okay. he, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, says, uh, Jamie Shaw, Jermaine McGilvery, Lee Rokojo, Jack Reed, Ryan Hall, then Widdup and Gale in the halves. George Burgess, Josh, Josh Hodgson, and Tom Burgess in the front row is pretty. It's pretty handy front row. Pretty handy. Yeah, Elliot Whitehead, John Bateman, and Sam Burgess in the back row. And then Ellis, Wormsley, Taylor, and Clark on the bench. Um, yeah. We when we've done ours, we've purposefully decided to not include NRL players. Yes, yeah, so we're thinking about the feasibility of an actual yeah. series. Yeah. Um, Rich Wilkinson's got Zach Hardacre. Jermaine McGilvery, Leroy Kudjo, Michael Shenton, Ryan Hall, Widdup and Gale, Burgess Hodgson, Wormsley, yeah. Stevie Ward, Elliot Whitehead, Sam Burgess. Then on the bench he's got Daryl Clark, John Bateman, Tom Burgess and Scott Taylor, coached by Daryl Powell. I call Leeds Rhino glasses on the Stevie Ward inclusion. Well... I mean, based on his ability last, by the way he was playing last year, then maybe so. Then of course Shenton's been injured and so has Ryan Hall, so I guess he's doing it based on... Ward's been injured on, the, year, on their day, well. I suppose, yeah. Yeah. I'd say so, yeah. You, you, Sarah McKenzie's got in touch with one. And everyone knows who she supports, but you'll know even more when we do the team, I assume. Um, Shaw McGilvery, Yeeman in one of the centre play positions, and Joe Wardle in the other, Broughton on the other wing. Bruff and Gale in the halves, Taylor, Howe and Watts, Bateman, Ellis and Jones Buchanan. So she's done a 13, a Super League 13, which is yeah. kind of what we're, we're doing as well, like you mentioned. So it is, it is. Do you well, have yours? I do. Do you want to do yours first? Just to add a bit of a. No, we'll do yours first and then we'll. We'll do mine. Okay, well, mine actually ended up being. Let me bring it up on my phone. Mine actually, looking through it now, has, has gone in a similar vein to Scoots, is probably mostly because I tried to base it on form and availability. So I went with Jamie Shaw at fullback, Jermaine McGilvray and Jody Broughton on the wings, uh, Lero Cujo and Kurt Yeeman in the centres. Bruff and Gale at six and seven. Front row of Liam Watts, Danny Houghton and Scott Taylor. Uh, back row of Jamie Jones Buchanan, John Bateman and Joe Westerman. And then, I know I've done an interchange bench, but you haven't. I've gone with Alex Wormsley, Gaz Ellis, Michael Lawrence and Nathan Massey. Power on the bench. Yeah. Is my theory. Fair play. Yeah, I think if I picked a bench, I'd... I'd struggle for props because we'll get we'll get I've got them all we'll I nearly put Daryl Clark on but Howen can do 80 minutes and you know why not just keep, I that, probably keep playing that platform I probably would have put him on because I just think he, he's offering so much again this year is, you know yeah. like we're talking no, he's about he's a yeah. he'd be in the, he'd, there in metres per carry yeah. and oh he was training on definitely training on <laughs> um, so I've got uh, fullback Sam Tompkins then in my wing positions I've got Manfredi and Swift um, Watkins and Percival in the centres Halves was tough for me Because I had quite a few to go at I thought mm. uh, I've gone with Brown and Williams But obviously I could have had Smith I could have had Myler I could have had Meller yeah. So there's a, a few choices out there for me um, I could have had Jamie Ellis there's, yeah. there's, You know, I've, I've got a, a bit to go out there But I've gone with Brown and Williams A um, bit of experience and youth there mm-hmm. And in my front row I've got uh, Hill and Roby Who picked pick themselves yeah. and even if I wasn't restricted on how many available players in those positions I had I would still go with that way then I've had to go Don Crosby who is an excellent player but he's not a mm. rep standard player True. but I've looked around 
and most of the Lancashire clubs have got you know you've got Moss up in Amor who are Cumbrian you've yeah. got um, Flower who's Welsh you've got Club who's Club and LMS oh, who's, so then, yeah, yeah. And then you've got people like Tarzi and yeah. um, people like that who are foreign yeah. um, so it, it just was it, it's it a tricky one an Ashton Sims and people like that so it was a, it was a tricky one in the back row but of course we have a Ryan Sutton would you say at the moment, I yeah. would say, I would say so. Yeah, um, Sutton would be if I was picking a bench. Yeah, which I've not got to yet, but I'll I'll I'll, get, I'll throw some names after. Okay, my back row was hard to pick because of the available talent, really. Yeah. But I've gone with the best back row in the competition, Farrell, and then Ben Curry will have to play a bit out of position on the on the right edge. Um, sure, he can cope. And then Sean O'Loughlin would be my loose forward. Okay. Uh, obviously, other people I could have had in around there like Joel Tompkins or Jack Hughes. People like that would would have been considerations for the bench. Yeah. Um, obviously. So yeah. So people like that would have been considerations for people like so. And if I could have overseas players, I'd obviously have Joe Burgess instead of Adam Swift. Yeah. And I'd have um, James Graham. Yeah. <laughs> in the side lineup, and I'd only so. probably need one prop on the bench then if I had Graham and well, yeah, sure. Graham and Hill. But yeah. Uh, I think my team against your team, as they stand, could give it a good go. Yeah. Qu- question marks in your team for me. Mm. Although Hardacre's not having a great year, yeah. Shaw sure is. Yeah. Do you think that Zach Hardacre's not a much more s- stronger player? I think um, no. I think if both players play to the best of their ability. Zach Hardacre is the better proposition, but I was trying to take it as seriously as I possibly could. And I think if I was a head coach, I would be picking based on performance and not reputation. I'm, I'm Plus, in that back line, there's a couple of, there's a whole FC, you know, there's a lot of overlapping kind of yeah. team, you know, p- team members there as well, so I, I guess that would support that decision as well. But no, Hardacre was, um, yeah, that was that was probably the bigger decision, but I tried to pick it on, on form, which is probably why Yeeman got in um, ahead of someone else. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why I went that way. Cool. There you go. So, that's uh, that's the feedback and shout-outs taken care of for this week. Let's take a look now at news from around the world of Rugby League. Okay, so two news from around the world of Rugby League, and we start down under, where we hear that Warrington have re-signed England prop Mike Cooper from the NRL side St George Illawarra Dragons on a three-year contract starting from next season. Cooper left the club to join the Dragons in 2013 with an agreement to rejoin the club when he returned from Australia. The 27-year-old played all three matches in England's home series win against New Zealand last year. It's great news and a great signing for the club, Warrington head coach Tony Smith said. It's probably something that we hoped for a few years ago uh, it's something that we hoped for a few years ago that Mike would eventually return to our club but it's probably a little sooner than we thought considering how well he's done now we've got a tweet on this one from Wally Frogmore who said Mike Cooper growing home is good for Super League but as one of our best players for the last season and a bit I cry so uh, yeah it was a surprising one for me this because Mike Cooper has done nothing but cover himself in, in glory and good you know develop his reputation whilst he's down on the so I can only assume it's that he wants to come back to the UK what he wants to do, what he's obviously itching for, is a place in my Lancashire. That it certainly helps I, you out if he comes back uh, next year, doesn't he? Next year, yeah, that, that's a, a front row position I can I can have a banker on because he's been, certainly been a consistent performer for the last few seasons. Yeah, um, more impressive than most people would have been anticipating. Yeah, and um, he he fits the NRL style as well. The the level he's worked hard to to get his like motor in order to consistently do it and that sort of thing. He then fits that style. He can play that sort of five drives of drives and a kick solid down the middle role with with not you know not mess not letting you down ever mm. sort of thing. Like they want a lot of in the NRL yeah. and certainly he'll add a sort of steady arm to this yeah. Warrington side next year when he's back. You would think which yeah. is, which is good for them and good for Super League to have a, a big name player returning. Yeah. You know if we can have. Big name players coming, England players coming back each year as well as them going out. Then the talent drain isn't quite. Yeah, and he's coming back at twenty-seven. He's coming back 
prime time as well, isn't he? He's and, not coming back. And that's a much better player than yeah, what left us. Precisely. So, no, it is, it is good news for the comp and, and best of luck to Mike Cooper. Staying with prop forwards coming over here then, uh, Wakefield Trinity Wildcats have signed 26-year-old Tongan international David Fafita on a deal until the end of the season from Cronulla Sharks. Coach Chris Ch-